This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast, all the way from Moscow, Russia, in the back of a cab. I'm joined by promoter Al Siesta. How are we doing, sir? I'm good, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Just enjoying the freedom. There's no lockdown. Everything is open. All the restaurants, concerts, arenas, sports venues, everything, brother. Just going home, really. Just spent really good time with friends, chatted business. Everything is positive just on the way back to my residence, which is just outside of Moscow, one mile. So, you know? I bet you're not looking forward to come back here. I am looking forward. I haven't seen my wife and kids for four weeks. Definitely looking forward, man. Miss them badly. <laughs> to be fair, things are getting back to full normality soon here anyway. So mm. hopefully uh, it'll be That's like... what I hear. That's what I hear. Yeah, hopefully it'll be like where it is now. Uh where you are in Russia. Um, Al, so just uh, want to start off with um, a fight night, obviously, that you were heavily involved in uh, with Kurbanov and, and Smith. Um, obviously, a lot of controversy and talk afterwards. Uh, do you think we see a rematch between Kurbanov and Smith, Al? If I'll get supported by a UK broadcaster, we will definitely see a rematch. But something's happening at the very top of WBO at 154 that I am right in the middle of that will deliver a rematch, I'm very confident. It's all about UK broadcasters and general public consensus. And if we're all on the same page, the rematch will happen. I'm pretty confident, definitely. And I think there's a need in the rematch. There's loads of questions that are still unanswered. Liam is unsatisfied. Kobanov is adamant he won the fight and they fired some shots last night on the Instagram so it looks like it's happening, you know? And he's up for the rematch from what you've heard? 100%. He, he won't shy away, I can guarantee you. Liam is very sceptical, saying oh, he, he, had a, he had some real luck and he will not be coming. I'm saying don't underestimate Russian character. You know, talking, so. about, talking about Russians, uh, what, what's the situation yeah. with your guy Sorokin at the moment? Any news on him? Yeah, talking the rematch with um, Danny Dignam as well. Another very, very good fight. Another potential placement for the UK broadcaster. Look, I've got plenty of matches, not only involved Russians, French, Germans, Greeks themselves. Um, just, I mean, it's not a secret few people waiting on some more broadcasting opportunities within the UK and we'll see probably July uh, also the zone with Eddie and loads of interesting stuff you know in terms of matches I'm always work so and Sirotkin and Liam Smith and Kobanov, one of those that I'm looking at very closely and I am keen to bring them to the UK especially with hearing that everything is opens up uh, restrictions are going and um, Crowds possibly will be allowed in full capacity very soon. I'm really keen and I'm excited, I'll be honest. Okay. We'll talk about the UK broadcaster situation in a little bit more depth now at the end of this. But sure. I just want to get your thoughts on the, the current heavyweight mess, if, if we can call it that. Um, so yeah. obviously Fury Joshua collapsed. Um, and then we heard from Frank Warren and Bob Arum that the Wilder fight is going to happen on July 24th. Uh, just your take yeah. on the whole situation first. My take will be, uh, it won't be controversial. I know you would like it to be, but I'll tell you where I stand. What I see is a casual fan, is a professional insider from every single aspect of it. It's like this. Whoever worked with Eddie Hearn in the past knows his cognitive ability, number one, his attention to detail, number three, it's not a secret. He is also a control freak. So we all know that. And him let it slip in this amateur manner, not knowing that there's litigation or saying he's been told that it's been resolved and it's not a threat. I'm not buying it. I am not buying it. I think there's more to it but as a result, we don't have the heavyweight fight of the century. 
And that doesn't mean we won't have it in December, which is very likely, but we don't have it now. So mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on wrong. I mean, Bob Arum, it was common knowledge. He hired that arena already. Three weeks ago, he's been shopping for the arena. So obviously, he was confident while the Fury 3 will happen. And everyone knew that. And I'm sure Eddie is not in exclusion. And um, I don't want to expand on that because I don't want to breed, breed any enemies because I want to work with everyone. I'm a matchmaker, promoter, manager, and quite valued in the business. I'm just voicing my opinion. I don't know why they needed to tell us that the fight is on and then do what they've done. I'm just coming into the channel just in case you're going to lose me. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, let me ask you about um, the situation yeah. regarding WBO uh, with Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk. Yeah. Do you think he vacates or do you think he fights Usyk? I tell you what I would have done if I would have been Anthony Joshua. If I would be Anthony Joshua, I would have gave Usyk that title on the consensus that I will be honoured if I want to fight for it back. And the reason for that, because I really want to fight Tyson Fury. I really want to fight Tyson Fury in December in Saudi, not because it's a massive payday, which is the reason number two. Okay, some people say, oh, stop bullshitting, the reason number. Okay, I tweeted the other day, I quickly tell you something very quickly. What is the most, what's the biggest thing that is lacking in professional boxing? And I said the answer, the truth. So I'll be telling only truth from now on, which I always done, but I've been quite reserved. I tell you what I think. Is Anthony driven by financial gain? Possibly, but he has everything. He's a very rich professional British athlete. He represents massive amount of brands. He's a big role model. So the money are there at top three, the concern, but also the legacy. As a legacy, I have to be in the fight if I'm Joshua against Tyson Fury. Ultimate heavyweight clash. Is Alexander Usyk such a serious opponent that potentially could, he could put me out? No doubt. It's a 50-50 fight. We saw the vulnerability of Anthony with Ruiz. Uh, Usyk is very strong mentally. He can climb under your skin. He can crawl into you without speaking a single word of English. Do you know what I mean? So just his solidness and confidence. Can AJ beat Usyk? 100%. Is it a dangerous fight? Absolutely. Can he vacate? But the problem is if AJ vacates the title, he would get massive criticism from the casual fan and the hot fall. So he is in front of a very big dilemma. And it's up to him, it's up to Eddie Hearn to make a correct decision. Are they rolling the dice and gambling and fighting Usyk? Possibly. Would I like to see that fight? Absolutely. So I'm just telling the truth, you know. I'm trying to take everyone's side. Will we be critical if Joshua vacates? We will, but whoever understands this business also understands the value of Anthony Joshua against Tyson Fury. So, look, so I ran the poll uh, recently. Al, Al, let me, sorry, let me quickly un interrupt you. If you're Anthony's advisor, promoter, manager, whatever, right now what are yeah. you telling him to do in this situation tell me what you want to do anthony do you want to fight Usyk? be very honest with me one on one tell me and as a fighter you'll probably say yes i do so then we're taking the fight and if he says i've got reservations because it's a such a tricky fight for the tenth of money that will get against Fury and the legacy wise. And by the way, while the three is not given either, it's absolutely not given. So I don't know, maybe Joshua should roll the dice with Usyk and secure the legacy to make sure that you need two for Tango. So one of them is definitely him. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I don't know. It's very complex. And let's disregard the critique that he would get from, from the fans if he will vacate the title. 
What does my gut feeling tell me? He will vacate. Because of the reasons that I just given you. Not because he's scared of Usyk. Nobody's scared of no one at the top of heavyweight division. It's just a business sense to make the correct choice. Look, it are too many short-sighted people in our business and too many egos. People are not very good to negotiate. And that is the biggest problem. If Eddie would have had preserved relationship with Al Heyman, Bob Arum, Oscar De La Hoya, Frank Warren, we never would have had this problem that we're having now. Everyone would have been on the same page. Simple as that. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's not the case. And maybe I've been perfectionist or over humil in terms of considering human character and I don't know, some humanitarian, which I am, I know. I mean, whoever knows me, you know me, you know? I like everyone, I love people. And I forgive myself and I forgive others because I'm only human after all, as it has been sung. So everyone prone to make mistakes. People need to move on. And egos and agendas and dirtiness in our business stands on the way of good business. And give fans what they want. Okay, Al, uh, you alluded to the... Um... TV network situation here in the UK. Obviously, you're talking yeah. about Sky Sports, who have got, I believe, one fight night left with Matram, I believe. And um, I think so in Newcastle. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. obviously, there are a lot of promoters in this sport. And um, do you do you think Sky will go down the route of working with various promoters, putting on regular fight nights, or do you think they'll become a a TV network that just does kind of pay per view fights? I'll be honest with you, and I am, by the way, I'm not holding any information because I'm trying to find out what Sky are thinking as any other promoter in the UK who's got dreams and aspirations, who has fighters, who has international connections. I'm hoping that I'm one of the people that might be considered alongside other guys who applied. And I can imagine this every single promoter who's got dream and aspiration has applied, probably, and said, Hey, I'm here. I might, I can help. And um, one thing I know, highly intelligent, very professional, uh, content conscience, love boxing. For over 30 years they've been in it. I can't see them jacking it in. I do believe they're warriors and survivors and they've got great creative ideas. And I do believe they will continue. The question is what they're going to do, what will be the infrastructure of the relationship, how they're going to build, how they're going to compete against this massive monster called the zone. Um, I'm hearing they, um, there's a contemplation rumor about acquiring BT Sports. <laughs> it's, just, it's just insane. I mean, you're dealing with a massive whale. You, you, it's a pink elephant in the room. The zone. Big. Massive. So whatever Sky thinking is better be good. Hmm. You know, that's all, all I can say. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Any updates on yeah. your ton of super middleweights? I'm talking about John Doherty, Shaquille Thompson, uh, Zach Chelly. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Lost. So whatever you just said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good. Repeat that again, please. Sorry. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so the question was, any updates on your, your super middleweights? Uh, so Shaquille Thompson, Zach Chelly, John Doherty. Yes, we're working on it intensely. I've got a few offers from uh, international promoters in regards to John Doherty and Zach Chelly. The, John Doherty had the reason why he gone off the radar. He had quite bad injury. And he had an illness right at the end of his camp. We had to pull him, up, pull, pull him out of the fight. Uh, I didn't want to make a big fuss online or with social media because I said to John, he goes, we need to make an announcement that I'm not fighting. I said, John, listen, I haven't announced your fight. And he had a great fight. I didn't expand on that. So I might as well just let it 
slide off because let it come back and fight another day. And um, there's no one asking, you don't have to answer. That's that's kind of situation. Zach Shelley went to Ukraine, fought, won by stoppage, loads in the pipeline. So as for my other fighters that I manage and promote internationally. Look, in terms of boxing, you know me, I'm always working. I have loads going on, loads in pipeline, talking to international networks, promoters, very busy Moscow meetings, Russia, France, Germany, United States, Canada, Middle East, always talking, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, the guys will fight very soon. I want to see what's happening. Zone, Sky, BT Sport, as I said to you. I mean, I'm very excited. Whatever it is, I will continue to serve my duty to the sport at the top of my ability with the same dedication. That's all, all I want to say. Okay, that sounds you know? good and a good uh, note to end on. So when you come back to Southampton from Moscow, safe travels, Al. Uh, enjoy the rest of your time out in Russia. I'd rather thank you. Bless you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, yeah, again.